Welcome to this edition of a Skills Update. This platform, as you know, is a marketplace for all information concerning skills development as required by individuals, corporate organizations, and Nigeria as a whole. Now, this week, we will be looking at the unique collaboration between the Industrial Training Fund and the Nigerian Employers Consultative Association in the area of training youths and putting them to work. Believe me, this has never happened in the history of Nigeria. But but for the benefit of those viewers who are just joining us on the program, we will once again take a brief trip into the new world of the Industrial Training Fund. My name is Angela Jai. Welcome aboard. The Industrial Training Fund is one agency of government that needs no rigorous introduction to Nigerian citizens. Its activities cut across every sector of the Nigerian economy and affects virtually every Nigerian family. The fund, which has been in existence for 43 years, has significantly improved in strategic areas of its core mandate, such as industry training need identification, development and implementation of training intervention, in-depth diagnostic studies of small and medium-scale enterprises, and Students' Industrial Work Experience Scheme, CWES, among many other important functions. Unlike in the past when skills development was not done in line with sector-specific or country needs, today the ITF strategy is centered around diagnosing the skills problem of Nigeria with a view to not only providing adequate skills for critical sectors, but also ensuring that those who acquire the skills are actually put to work. The Industrial Training Fund is implementing a national technical and entrepreneurial skills development program for 1,000 youths in each state of the Federation. Already, over 1 million youths have benefited and more have been added day by day. For a long time, Nigerians have complained endlessly about the lack of requisite skills especially in the construction sector in the area of world-class finishing for building jobs. Today, this is fast becoming a thing of the past as the ITF, under the current administration, is not only enhancing those skills according to sectoral needs, the fund is also classifying artisans based on their skills and competency levels. For the first time in the history of Nigeria, the federal government is undertaking a nationwide skills gap assessment to first uncover what skills are lacking in the labor force, what skills are needed by employers in the market now, and what skills will be needed in the future. This assessment is being developed by ITF in partnership with UNIDO, UNIDO. The results of the assessments will be used to develop the NSRP, which will aim to train 2 million employable Nigerians annually. There is no gain saying the fact that it is a new dawn in Nigeria in the area of skills development. With consistent implementation of the working strategies, the ITF will deliver a sound economy driven by the right skills. Analysts and industry watchers have continued to give the ITF under the current administration kudos for embarking on a nationwide skills gap assessment in collaboration with the United Nations Development Organization, UNIDO. The assessment was undertaken to make sure the country gets the bare facts in order to effectively tackle the skills problems across all the sectors of the economy. Now, Skills Update interviewed the Director General of the ITF, Dr. Mrs. Juliet Chukas Onoeko, on the ITF's laudable initiatives and the quick wins for the current administration. Well, I I would say it's almost like um a marriage or something that we have to work together on as in partnership you know to achieve a more or less a win-win arrangement you know the government is concerned about job creation ensuring that as many trainees or graduates as possible get employed 
or go into their own businesses. And then the employer is also concerned about uh, finding the right skilled workforce to be able to drive their own businesses. And then the ITF is um, also an interface between these two people, the supply side, the demand side. It is our, sh our job to ensure that both sides are well, um, are balanced and they are speaking to each other. So the ITF work closely with the organized um, pri uh, private sector to, ens to find out what the needs are. And then also we communicate a lot of this to the stakeholders, the policy makers, to let them know this is what we're getting back, getting from the market. And it's actually true, this, um, the, the strategic interactions we've had in the past, that we're able to know that, yes, really some sk the skills development we're getting uh, right now, but most of it, or a good number of it, is not uh, aligned with the market needs. And that, that led us into uh, commencing the major skills gap survey to see how these uh, gaps can be identified and be better aligned so that we can guarantee more jobs. The current government under President Buhari has a passion for capacity building, job creation, they are also focusing on how, how to bring down the unemployment level right now, which is also the passion of the Industrial Training Fund. That is our passion, and that is why we have proactively gone ahead to start certain things, to start um, uh, coming up with uh, some quick wins for the present government to ensure that, you know, we all hit the ground running and that within a very short time, there will be something um, noticeable, something that people can look at and say, yes, this government have actually achieved this milestone and that milestone. We're already working. Um, right now, we have um, had our own strategic meeting. We've drawn up, we've looked at certain things we've been doing before. You know, I, I we're coming on board last year. I had set a goal uh, to train two million per annum. But looking at the major need and the high level of unemployment, underemployment, and having over 100 million people living below the poverty line, we know that the best way is to scale up training programs and, and also not just training for training's sake, to train for employability, to train for wealth creation, for job creation. So that is what we are doing right now. So our focus is now more on how many of those trained can be employed? How can we ensure that in a quarter we can train over a million and then we are sure that at least 70% of these people trained get either employed or start their own businesses? So we have to go into more like outside the box thinking. We're no longer doing the, uh, oh, the structured system of things, okay, it must be this way. We know that the youth these days are, I mean, they are dynamic when it comes to um, innovative ideas, the expectations, aspirations, and all of that. We have uh, recently come up with uh, a list of 100 top businesses or trade areas that are of interest to the youth. And we are also, we've also gone ahead to commission a team to come up with feasibility study for all these trade areas, 100 trade areas. We have almost concluded our uh, job portal, which is going to be like a forum for employers to meet employees. <laughs> Quick wins are things that we can deliver within the, within the 100 days of the present administration. In, in 100 days, what can ITF showcase? And there are things that we directly impact the people. The president, all of them are concerned about skill, about the number, making sure that we're training the millions and also ensuring that jobs are created for these millions of people. But of course, we may say, oh, we don't have enough industry to absorb these trainees, but that's where the entrepreneurial part comes in. We believe that when we train these people, they should go out there and create jobs, even if it's just for two people, three people. And by the way, we're also working with another group of people, um, organization, to see how our centers, our technical training centers, are not just used to train trainees, but to act as an incubator centers or to be the market space where trainees who graduate and don't want to go into working for anybody could actually start up their own businesses with minimal income or capital. 
because you don't need to look for accommodation, uh, infrastructure, and all of that. You can use our center, meaning you can produce your profile, business, do your feasibility study, market your product or your program, get orders for it, and come to our, in our center and produce. <laughs> We have come up with these top 100 businesses that the youth love to do. And I tell you, a good chunk of that is made up of the ICT-related um, businesses. In fact, it's amazing what I saw. We, this tax, this tax were actually, um, was actually carried out by a group of youth, young people who actually are more of IT, they are more IT compliant than the older generation. And they came up with amazing things. You know, skills that will support the Nollywood industry, the entertainment industry, the fashion industry, the uh, hospitality industry, different areas. Imagine skills, skills that, you know, before people usually would, may not have heard about them, but they, they have actually come up with these things. And that's why I also commissioned that the same team of youth should carry, us, uh, carry out the feasibility study for those um, trade areas. And based on that, we're not only going to be training these youth, we're also going to give them this uh, feasibility study as a guide. It's not just it's not something big, something very small, but tells them the potentials tied to this particular skill. So when you acquire this skill, this will, this could be the target market. This area might need this skill and all of that. You could say, okay, the telecom industry need this kind of skill, or the power industry, or just the international community, whatever. It, amazing things that they could do. And then the online component of it is a lot. There's a whole lot. So many things. I, I mean, I'm excited. You know, I'm sure I will have to learn one or two of those skills. The youth lounges that we're setting up at the area offices is also something amazing, something that will better engage the youth within the rural areas, the cities, you know, and it's something that will also provide a platform for quick mentoring of this youth. It's something that every month there will be an exciting event going on there, and it's, it's amazing. We can't wait to unveil these things, but it's under our quick win, so just watch out for it. Look at some of the exciting activities of the fund this week. The Industrial Training Fund has finalized a structure that will provide 2 million jobs for the Nigerian youths annually through its skills acquisition and employment creation programs. The Director General ITF, Mrs. Julia Chukas on our call, disclosed this on Friday, saying the fund plans to achieve the feat by collaborating with the Nigerian Employers Consultative Association. She spoke in Lagos about the unveiling of the ITF and NECA Technical Skills Development Project for Rough and Tumble plus Betty O School of Fashion Design in Lagos. Job creation is critical and that's also part of uh, the promotion of the ITF. So not just train for training sakes, but to make sure that the training is generating jobs amongst our youth. And that's why we are also uh, we're here today. And most times we have quality or well-trained workforce that can represent Nigeria anywhere in the world. And we're already doing that. And I'm happy to uh, to be here to commission this center today. The, well, the Industrial Training Fund actually provides the funding for this project. Based on because most of the people who are participating in this program are also contributors to the ITF training contribution. So what we do is that part of that contribution that we see, we need to also upgrade some of these centers so that we can train people because our mandate is actually to train, to provide, to encourage and to also promote training activities in the country in all sectors of the economy, every sector. And then also part of it is also certified standardized training programs that are offered in different places. And so to achieve that, we can't do it alone. We collaborate a lot. We collaborate, but most times when it requires funding, if we can't do it alone, we also have to reach out to other people who can support us. But for the ITF Mega program, this is actually being supported by ITF, only by ITF. And that we are doing that because we want the employers to know that they can get value for their money. 
that what to give, what they give to us can also return back to them in a bigger form, in a big way. Because right now, if you see the setup you have here, you can see that it's a great benefit to this organization, the Rock and Tom, to have this huge, this extra uh, equipment to train more people. And most of the trainees that come out from here, if you decide to work for Rock and Tom, they can decide to go and work somewhere else or to start their own businesses. But the important thing is that the quality that's already existing in this organization will not be replicated in the lives of this youth. So at the end of the day, Nigeria is the best, it's better for it. We have more jobs being created around the country. The Skills Update team also spoke to the project director, ITF NECA Technical Skills Development Project, Mrs. Helen Jemiregbe, and she had this to say. For employment in industry, and we have uh, data to show that a number of them, that most of the ones that we have trained over the six years have been employed by the industry and some of them have also been assisted to set up their own businesses along the areas they have been uh, equipped in. So we have some of them running auto mechanic workshops, we have some of them running wedding uh, workshops and they employ a few people to work with them. And the, the decision to also move into the agri sector and the garment uh, technician area is also in the pursuit of uh, self-employment because those ones invariably uh, are likely to end up either working for themselves or working for established uh, organizations. No, let's look at the skills, vocational training. Do we really have enough skilled manpower in this country? As a country, no, we don't. Like I said, before the project even kicked off, we undertook the manpower requirements economy for skilled manpower and that survey the findings indicated that we lack indigenous technical manpower in the areas of building construction as you agree with me we rely on neighboring countries for artisans in the building construction sector if you want ties laid in a straight line you want your plumbing done without your house being flooded you have to get uh, plumbers and tilers from uh, Ghana or Kutonu or uh, along our neighboring uh, countries. If you use Nigerians, you could copy the results. You will discover that it cannot be as neat as what those foreign technicians uh, would produce. And in the areas of uh, even auto mechanics, the vehicles we have today require a different type of auto maintenance skills than the ones we used 20, 30 years ago. So that's why you find some vehicles will break down and they can't easily find a mechanic to help them work on them. So we are also using Pujo Automobile in uh, Kaduna and Truck Masters here at Oregu to train technicians in the modern type of vehicles. I know Nigerians will be excited to know that the Industrial Training Fund has commenced the standardization of the services of artisans and other service providers in the informal sector. This is in a bid to improve the quality of these services and end the frustration associated with poor quality services in Nigeria. Here's what the DG had to say. <laughs> We have started a compilation of our trainees in the different sectors. And I mentioned, I, I mentioned to you the job portal. On that platform, we also want to upload most of these people, as many of them as possible. Before they are uploaded, we would have determined their competency level, which would be indicated. So if you're an employer of labor or somebody who needs to hire a hand in carpentry or brick lane, you can look at it as, okay, we'll be able to say, okay, in brick lane, excellent or whatever, or we'll say, okay, this person has um, a, an advanced knowledge in the area of building or construction and all of that. And then you can look at it. And it helps you to be able to know the kind of tax to give to these people. We don't want an employer to engage somebody without knowing their competency level. It's, it's okay to have a paper, a certificate to show, but you know what happens with certificates in this country. Sometimes you need to be able to back it up with the competency. The performance is what actually determines whether you earn that certificate or not. But we also want to help the employers, especially if the people have been trained by us, to be able to guide them to say, look, we can vouch for this person up to this stage. But if you give them a tax outside of this competency level, 
well, you you may just need to do that at your own risk, you know. And that's also the beauty of this uh, uh, national uh, vocational qualification framework. I'm sure when that is fully functional, it will also help. At every point in time, you can know the level, the skill level of any um, technician or artisan. Skills Update interviewed some of the trainees under the ITM NECA Skills Development Project. They're quite happy that now they can acquire quality skills that will secure their future, even without having to pay. You will agree with me that it is indeed a new dawn in Nigeria in terms of skills development. <laughs> It's a great opportunity. Why do I say so? I say so because where we came, we were so many. But at the end of the day, we came out 13 of us, or if not 15. So it's a privilege for me to be among them. And I want to use this medium to go, 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 to go more far, 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 so that I can achieve something great at the end of the day. I'm so grateful, at least since someone or uh, an organization has already removed that tedious burden of school fees alone. I'm very grateful. It's a wonderful opportunity. In fact, it's an awesome opportunity. I believe that the, the sky is my starting point because I'm dreaming of having a, a fashion house that will clothe like five out of ten Nigerians. That's the ITF. So happy because it's a life-changing opportunity because there is no cost on me. So for that, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. Wow. This opportunity is wonderful. And then it's just wonderful. That, that's just the word. back. You're still watching Skills Update and my name is Angela Jai. Please sending your inquiries about any aspect of the Industrial Training Fund's activities to skillsupdate at weeklywritengu.com. For advert placements, you can also contact the Skills Update team via info at weeklywritengu.com or via the numbers plus 234-8076-946536 or the number plus 234-8076. 8136531086. But then it's text only. Thanks for watching and see you again next week.